Hello, welcome to the Law, Liberty, and Logic channel. Today we're going to do a video on Florida cell phone searches, which would be a basic introduction to cell phone searches and the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. The following presentation is meant for informational purposes only and is not intended as legal advice. Seek a licensed attorney if you need legal assistance. For cell phone searches, a 2014 Supreme Court ruling is key. In Riley v. California, it was stated that the police generally may not, without a warrant, search digital information on a cell phone seized from an individual who has been arrested. The court noted that a warrantless search is reasonable only if it falls within a specific exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement. However, general searches for officer safety and evidence collection instant to arrest cannot extend to a cell phone without a warrant. Unlike cell phone searches within the U.S., cell phone searches at the border have a lower standard. There is a long-standing border search doctrine permitting searches of digital devices at the border. The state of Florida has not had mandatory federal authority in the 11th Circuit speak to the specific nuances of this Fourth Amendment application since 2016. However, the 9th Circuit, which is not mandatory law in Florida, permits law enforcement at the international border to perform a cursory search of a digital device upon something less than reasonable suspicion without violating the Fourth Amendment. A district court in California stated that border agents could conduct a suspicionless cursory search of a phone, limited in scope only to a totality of the circumstances test. Only reasonable suspicion, though, was needed for a deep dive, which is a forensic examination. The court focused on the fact that the detention was of the property, not the person, who could leave, so the standard for investigation was lower. While not controlling law in Florida, it could have troubling implications for the Fourth Amendment if followed. A hot topic is whether fingerprint security is less safe than passcode security, as fingerprints are considered non-testimonial in most cases, but passcodes are considered protected testimony usually. A Minnesota court found a man in contempt of court for failing to provide fingerprints to unlock his phone. The court ruled that the fingerprints were non-testimonial and, thus, not protected by the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. A Pennsylvanian federal court found in SEC v. Wang that compelling a passcode would violate the Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. However, it should be noted that this court weighed a doctrine called the Foregone Conclusion Doctrine. The Foregone Conclusion Doctrine is the idea that, where the location, existence, and authenticity of the purported evidence is known with reasonable particularity, the contents of the individual's mind are not used against him, and, therefore, no Fifth Amendment protection is available. In the application of cell phones, the government may try to argue that specific evidence on a cell phone is known to the government through some other testimony or evidence and, therefore, giving up a passcode is not testimonial. As on-point case law affecting Floridians hasn't come through yet, it is important to take note of other rulings and to think through what is wisest given your own situation to protect your privacy. It would appear that, as to the physical cell phone itself, using encryption or other protection that relies on speech rather than physicality, such as a retina scan or a fingerprint, may provide more protection if the law is followed like in other jurisdictions. Depending on the situation, a person may want to avoid keeping sensitive files on a laptop or cell phone, especially when crossing a border, and instead, opt for other means to access files remotely. Thank you for listening to our basic introduction on cell phones and searches. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos.